So I recently spoke with West Ham legend Julian Dix about his playing career and what he's up to now with West Ham ladies. So we start uh, with your first club, Birmingham, as a youth player. How did you first get uh, involved there? Cause you were born in Bristol, is it from Bristol originally? Yeah, I was born in Bristol. Um, what it was, I was playing for my junior side, Nova's Lane. Um, and I, was, I was about nine or ten years old and it was a scout watching. Um, and he was very good friends with Ron Saunders, obviously the, okay. the Villa manager. Mm. Um, and he went up to my dad and said, Look, I'd, I'd like your son to, to come for trials for, at Villa um, when he's 14, because obviously you could only do it when you were 14 then. So mm. when 14 come, obviously they kept an army. When 14 come, I went to Villa for, for trials. Um, yeah. And on the first day, the manager said to me, Look, I would, I would like to sign your son. Um, and this is what we want. And but from is Ron Saunders resigned from Villa, went mm -hmm. to Birmingham, yeah. um, and asked me to go to Birmingham with him. And so I said that I, I did. I left home at fourteen, went to school in Birmingham, um, lived in in digs with um, apprentices in in young pros, um, mm -hmm. and trained two or three times a week. So uh, that's how that come about. Yeah. Do you enjoy your time there? I think it was over eight yard appearances there. Eh? Yeah, I, I loved it. I, I mean, this is it was my first first club, um, yeah. and I played. I look back and I played with some fantastic players that I thought were fantastic players. People mm. like um, Tony Cotton, David Seaman, Mick Hartford, um, and Mark Dennis and Pat Vanden and people like that. I mean, I I, I had a a rude awakening when I went there. Um, <laughs> because obviously they had the reputation, but they were fantastic, absolutely fantastic. I love my time at Birmingham. Yeah. On to uh, West Ham then. Was it uh, John Lyle who brought you there? Yeah, John. He, it was uh, in 88. He come down. Um, Gary Pender at the time was the manager of Birmingham. Um, and at the time, Birmingham had, had to sell their players to keep afloat, um, yeah. basically, um, like a lot of clubs did then. Um and I remember it like it was Jesse John come down with Eddie Bailey, who was the, the chief scout, and come down and said, um, I'm going to give you £650 a week. I was on mm -hmm. 240 at the time. He said, I'm going to give you £650 a week, so I'll give you £100 appearance. You've got five minutes to think about it. <laughs> I went, right, OK. Um, <laughs> and obviously back then there was no mo mobile phones or anything yeah. like that. Um, so <clears throat> I... Um, I come back in and I said, "Yep, I'd love to sign for for West Ham." He went, "Yeah, I know you would," and and that was it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was again. I mean, John Lyle was an absolute gentleman, um, mm. fantastic coach, um, man management, but above all else, he was a gentleman. And some decent coaches there as well. Billy Bonds as well towards the end of the time at West Ham first spell. Anyway, a good uh, good learning curve as well with the coaches there as well. Yeah, um, when I went there, we I mean, the team I played in, I mean, that's some good players. Again, they have people like Phil Parks in goal, yeah. Ray Stewart at right back. They had Alvin, Martin, Tony Gell. We had people like Alan Devonshire, Mark Ward, Alan Dickens, Billy Bond, yeah. Cotty, McAvenny. I mean, there's some fantastic players yeah. there. Um, but again, when I went there, they were in, I think, the bottom three or four. Um, mm. But again, it it didn't bother me. Um, I because all I wanted to do was play football, yeah. um, and the only thing I when I when I signed the only thing I knew about West Ham was John Lyle and Billy Bond, and that was it. So yeah. again, it, it was a, it was a fantastic club, and like I said, when you go out up Upton Park for the first time, I mean, mate, that place is incredible. And then on to um, Liverpool after that. Was that was that your decision or the club uh, money wise they needed a bit of money? No, it was it was a club's decision. Like, to yeah. be honest, I didn't really want to go. Um, mm. I was happy at West Ham. Um, a bit of politics involved. Um, I went and met Graham Souness, who yeah. I loved a bit as a person, as a manager. He's my kind of person. Um, yeah. But I'm really well with Graham. And then unfortunately, Graham resigned, um, mm. and. Roy Evans took over, who I didn't see eye to eye with, and I was just like, listen, I knew the writing was on the wall. But again, I played for one of the biggest clubs in the world. I played yeah. with some fantastic players. 
Um, and I made some good friends up there. Yeah. When you left then, was it uh, was West Ham the only choice, or was there other clubs available? No, Tottenham come in for me, um, yeah. but I wasn't going to go to Tottenham. Um, <laughs> obviously, not being a West Ham player and going to Tottenham, yeah. it was it was never going to happen. Yeah. Um, Birmingham come in for me again, but they wanted me on loan. Um, uh-huh. And to be honest, I was 25 years old. I just wanted to settle down. Yeah. I didn't want to be on loan, so I'm travelling near there and everywhere. I just wanted to settle down. Um, then I found out West Ham were uh, in for me. Obviously, Harry was a manager at the time. Yeah. Um, and it was just a, a case of waiting for him to, to come in. So, obviously, that was a, an easy decision for me. Some decent times when you went down, obviously, staying up first of all. And then, was it the sixth, fifth or sixth place finish then? Yeah, well, yeah, I think it was either six or seven. I mean, we yeah. had some good times there. Um, and we obviously, we had some poor times as well. And, yeah. But again, what, what makes every club, uh, obviously, are the fans. But when, like, at Upton Park, because it's so tight, I mm. mean, the atmosphere, especially at night games, was, was yeah. incredible. Um, but again, I mean, the fans are, the fans are awesome. Unfortunately, then it was the injury. So, what was it? And then the knee injury, the fourth years ago. And well, yeah. I done I done my first knee. I had my first knee operation when I was 22. Um, yeah. I we played at Ashton Gate, and my, half of my foot went off the pitch, and half never. And I felt something go. It wasn't painful yeah. or anything. Um, yeah. But the next day, it was uh, it was like a balloon. Mm. Um, and the club surgeon at the time diagnosed it wrong. Um, yeah. And messed my knee up more. Mm. And then I went to another surgeon, the name of John King, in a London Independent. And he took around to me and went, Julian, your knee's fucked. Yeah. And that was it. And to be honest, I felt physically sick. I yeah. felt like throwing up all over him. Because <laughs> um, he said, he said, listen, you you got a 50-50 chance of playing again. And I was 22 years old. Yeah. Um, and... And that was it, really. I mean, I, I worked, I worked hard um, to get back. We had a, a new physio, John Green. Um, I mean, if it wasn't for John Green or, or John King, I think mm. I, I would have struggled to get back. Um, so I have them two to thank a lot for. Yeah, what, what about it, Ashley? Then uh, you played for the under twenty ones and the B team for England. Does it always bother you a bit? You never got that that full uh, cap? No, not to, to be honest. No, it didn't. No. I mean, I I enjoyed my time twenty ones in England Bay, but. Again, they treated you like kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. 21 years old, I was married, I had I had twin girls, and they mm. told me I'd go to bed at 10 o'clock. You know what I mean? It wasn't a case of, listen, behave yourself, or blah, blah, blah. It was, right, 10 o'clock, off you go. Yeah. And I went, no, hang on a minute, it's not right. Yeah. Um, the under-21s had a row with Dave Sexton, because um, I, got, I got sent off in the quarterfinals, um, played in the final, and had a row with him after the game, so that didn't help either. Um, but no, it, to be honest, it, it didn't. It didn't bother me um, yeah. that I didn't play. Yeah, in the beginning, of course, I would have loved to play for England. Um, but as time went on, I knew it was never going to happen. So, really, I just cut my ties with it, and I said I'd rather build my dog kennels than play for England. So what about? I mean, obviously, you had this nickname, the Terminator, and the Heart Man image. Do you think was that a big help in your career, or, or a hindrance? Do you think? Um, probably both, really. I mean, the yeah. hindrance, obviously, because the referees in Linesman didn't like my reputation. Yeah. Um, playing against players when you had a reputation of being hard, yeah. obviously right wingers didn't fancy it most mm-hmm. of the time. So I'm not saying you got easy games all the time, but some games you did. So I mean, it helped in in some ways, and it hindered me in some ways. So you have to take the rough with the smooth. Yeah, yeah. I see. Obviously, a lot of fans nowadays. Obviously, you're a legend, West Ham, but. I think you recognise more now for for more of your football ability as well and just the hard man as well. Does that please you as well? Or? Well, uh, like people, they like the, obviously they they come up to me, even my Tottenham fans or Chelsea fans and, and things like that, and they said, I, "I wish you played for for my team." Yeah. yeah when I was on the terraces, yeah, I used to abuse you, um, which you <laughs> which you would expect. Yeah. Um, but listen, as, as long as people remember me for. Going out, giving hundred percent, wearing my yeah. heart on my sleeve. That's all that matters to me, really. I, like playing with players. Players knew what I was about. They knew I could play football. They knew I was a good player. Um, yeah. I mean, it sounds big, it is, but so did I. Yeah. You know, what I mean, I knew I could play football. Um, so again, it's, it's nice that it, it people it say things like that. Is uh, it, 
does. It means a lot. And then, well, you talk about some of the coaches there, John Lyle, Ron Saunders, Graeme Souness. Is there any that had a bigger influence on your career than any other, do you think? Just my dad, really. Um, he yeah. wasn't really a coach. Um, yeah. But my, my old man was a, a semi-pro footballer back in Bristol. Mm. Um, but I, I had a manager, John Bond, as well, um, yeah. at Birmingham. And John Bond was absolutely fantastic. It reminded me of, of John Lyle and Ron Saunders mixed. Yeah. Um, he was a great coach, but he was quite ruthless. He was a bit like Ron Saunders. He was quite quite ruthless. Um, and obviously, I, I played under Harry and Billy as well. So, again, what, whatever you think of your managers, you take good and bad from all of them, um, yeah. and you try and use it to, to the best that you can. But, like I said, lucky enough, I, I mean, I played under some fantastic managers that, that could coach. Right on, on to yourself now, coaching with the West Ham ladies. Uh, yeah. it took over last year, was it? How did that first come along? How did it come along? Yeah. Um, well, it was, I mean, the season, I didn't know, but the season before, they finished one from bottom um, yeah. in their league. Um, and the captain, Stacey Little, put on Twitter that if you think Julian Dick should coach the West Ham ladies, retweet. And I retweeted it. Yeah. Um, so in the end, I knew I knew Stacey probably a year before, um, but so I, I spoke to her and I spoke to the chairman at the time, um, and that was it. I went like it was halfway through pre-season, um, and that was, I was, that was it. I coached them um, up to the season started, and I always said to them, "Listen, I would treat you like professionals, men, women, made no difference to me. Yeah. Um, that's the way it's going to be." Um, and they, they responded well. I mean, we played, um, I think it was our second pre-season friendly, and to be honest, mate, they were shit. So mm. I, I absolutely annihilated them in the dressing room, yeah. and they're probably thinking, what have we got in for? <laughs> um, but again, they, they responded, um, which yeah. is all you asked for, just a reaction. Um, and it, to be honest with you, it's been tough. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're good girls. I, I yeah. love them the bits. They work hard. Most of the time, um, but consistency lets them down. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like I said, next season, if I'm still doing it, then we'll, we'll try and get rid of that um, because, I mean, they finished sixth this year, which was a good season for them, considering yeah. they finished one from bottom last year. They got in the cup final. All right, they got their asses kicked, but they yeah. still got in the in the cup final. Um, so again, yeah, listen, I'm, I'm proud of them. They should be proud of themselves because they've worked hard. And it has been difficult. I mean, it has mm. been difficult for them at times. I mean, in some games I've gone with 12 players, and that's all I have. Mm. Um, so hopefully next season things will ch- well, they will change. So hopefully it'll be a it'll be a better season. Yeah, I mean, they're currently in the the women's Premier League. Yep. Is there any plans long term for to get into that Super League? Uh, Super yeah, League? of course there is. Because at the end of the day, there's no point in doing it otherwise. Yeah. Um, we've got a new chairman coming on board. I think he gets sworn in tonight at the AGM. Um, he has some ideas, but as I said to him, listen, all I want is money. Mm. That I can pay some of my girls, yeah. um, give them a little bit of expenses, because we all do it for nothing. Um, yeah. So I can like pay, give them some money for expenses. Then you can start attracting better players. Yeah. But you, you're looking like, for, for the girls, you're probably looking like £75 a month. So it's, yeah. it's nothing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Is is compared to men's football, it's peanuts. Yeah. Yeah, um, right. But again, you have to have somebody to to generate this money or or put the money in. So yeah, is it uh, is it affiliated with the with the men's team at all? I know some the Super League teams after the do they or no? They they, they die. I mean, there, there's certain criteria that yeah they have to get, which is like yeah. they have to be watched by 400 people, which is ridiculous. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's absolutely because most of the teams in there don't get watched by that anyway. No. Um, but again, it, it comes down to money. Yeah. So if you do go up, you've got to generate a lot of money. Um, so again, hopefully, like I said, at the moment we're just we're in, obviously under the same umbrella as West Ham men's. They, yeah. they help us out. I mean, financially they don't help us out. But what they do do, we use a training ground. Mm. Um, I've done a Q&A with Billy Bonds uh few months ago they let us have a room at Upton Park for nothing so they help us in certain ways yeah. um, and they give us kit and training kit and everything else so it's, um, without them it'd be a lot more difficult mm. and then finally then on to West Ham season what do you think of that obviously 
dipped off a bit second half. But uh... yeah, I mean, but the, the, the thing is, I think if you'd have said at the start of the season they're going to finish tenth, around tenth, you'd have gone okay, fair enough, decent. But yeah. when you're fourth at Christmas, yeah, and then things like go wrong and keep going wrong, and keep going wrong, you don't get results. It's mm. disappointing because you expect more. Mm. Um, it, listen, they, they've got some good players, but again, consistency in some of them individually yeah. ain't been good enough. No. Um, and they have, they have to improve on that because yeah. it, it could have been a, a really, really good season instead of just a, a mediocre season. Yeah. I've seen people coming up with the excuse that you know, Big Sam's contract and whatever the players aren't committed, but do, can you can they use that as an excuse at all, of do you think? Of course they can. Listen, you yeah. know, I, I wrote something, on, I was speaking to somebody on Twitter the other day, and they said, well, it's down to the management. I said, no, it's, it's down to all of them. Yeah. Listen, it doesn't matter who the manager is. It could be Peter Pan. The players yeah. got a job to do. They have to go out and give 100%. One, yeah. because of the shirt. Two, because of the club. Three, because of the supporters. Mm. And if you if you expect the manager to put another 10, 15% on them, I said, they're in the wrong game. Yeah. So you should go out every single game and give 100%. Whether the manager's Sam Allardyce, Alex Ferguson, again, Peter Pan, Willy Wonka, who cares? Yeah. At the end of the day, you have a job to do. Um, and a lot of people, obviously, a lot of people at West Ham supporters don't really like Sam. And yeah. it's, I mean, it's, things have, have gone from bad to worse. But, again, you can't, you can't blame him on his own. Players have to stand up and take responsibilities um, yeah. because they ain't been good enough. Then what are we about yourself then, your future in management? Is the ultimate goal then the West Ham job? Of course. You see, I'd, at the end of the day, it'd be a dream job for me. Yeah. Listen, I'm, not, never say, I'm never going to say it's going to happen because mm. you just don't know. Um, but again, that, that would be a dream job for me. But at the moment, like I said, I'm, I'm happy coaching the women. Um, one, because like the women, they don't have egos. They haven't got attitudes. Yeah. They yeah. don't try and get each other sent off. They don't mm. fake injuries. Yeah, there's things that let them down, like commitment and consistency on a regular basis, but they're genuine things, um, yeah. Not obviously not the other side of it. So, I mean, ideally, yeah, of course, I would love to manage West Ham one day. That's brilliant. Thanks very much. Not a problem.